Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome everyone back to Human Humane Architecture here on Think Tech Hawaii. We're broadcasting live from our exotic tropical paradise in Honolulu, Hawaii. And this is the first survivor show having survived Hurricane Lane, us pretty well here, other islands uh, not so much. And if we can get the first picture up, this is just a compilation of things that I have been portraying here at the bottom right, you see how in one of the most sturdy buildings, because it's uh, this is the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, which is made out of solid stone, they were desperately trying to keep the tables from flying away and tying them with uh, cloth uh, table napkins, which I found rather sort of cute. And so they were trying to board up the Starbucks slash ABC store with plywood, and plywood being Probably the most invasive materials we have here it comes from the Pacific Northwest, is glued there, termite treated there, shipped here. By the time it arrives, has little to nothing to do with what we consider to be so sustainable about wood. And so um, coming back and picking up my car, I took this picture of out there west in the Eva Plains. We were building three-story buildings with that stick frame and plywood. And then there is a container driving by. So I'm thinking we are housing, hosting or the goods we ship in better than than people, which makes you wonder. And what makes you wonder, the top right is like at the, uh, the Soto after our Tiki show was saying, is Tiki still there? And have you been to Tiki's? This is the restaurant just around the corner. And the storm wasn't even really gone. Someone already had printed in China probably and shipped it here again, a t-shirt uh, where uh, Hurricane Lane survivors. So what did we really learn from that? And the middle part is, most likely this lady saved us, and there's this article in the New York Times that I can recommend, or USA Today, sorry, that for several reasons, again, Pele, the goddess of volcanoes, might have been involved that we didn't get hit. So all these things and more, I'm thinking, you know, related to our discipline and profession, with whom could I talk best about this stuff? And um, next picture, it's someone that I want to revisit because he was one of the first shows uh, on this program here some one and a half years ago, and that's Dr. Will Chapman. Thank you, Will, for being back with us. And I know you're a big fan of movies and always make these great comparisons between movies and, um, and, and other things and architecture as being part of life. So I'm like, went to my movie library and I brought some of my German goodies here. And this is Elvis's Girls, Girls, Girls which is still portraying our islands as a, as, a, uh, uh, as a grass hut sort of island. But the other ones, more importantly, uh, Blue Hawaii, which is here, Blaues Hawaii, the original German version. Blaues Hawaii, one of my favorites. There you go. <laughs> and the descendants, and I watched on the plane, which is downsizing. And if you go back to the slide number two, where I collaged all these, these are all things because your previous show was called Howley's Hawaii, and you insist on that I was the one calling the show like that. But revisiting that, these are all Howley's who made these movies, and most characters are Howley's. And they're addressing issues on the islands, and no surprise, we're Howley's, right, as one can tell. <laughs> so addressing these issues um, is, is something that we want to talk about. So the next slide is... You're here to catch up because it's been one and a half years, but also you're here because you're sitting here in an additional capacity that's fairly new. And what is that one, Bill? Well, I'm the serving interim dean of the architecture school now, Martin, which you probably know well since mm -hmm. you're on the faculty of mm -hmm. the architecture school. I, no, I know. <laughs> and, and it's a great pleasure to be back. It didn't seem like a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Seemed like yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Feels like that. What we see here is the building you're uh, you're now in charge of, and it's people. And um, the top picture is is uh, its courtyard feature in the middle of it that we just got renovated, and we sort of missed a little out on the chance to do something with it that could be a little bit more inspiring because it was. Uh, designed in a way that we feel very hot in there. It's like a bowl, right? It's open to the top and little to no openings to the side, so it gets very hot. This is mostly an excuse for people to hide in air-conditioned rooms, which we have plenty, but you not so much. Explain a little bit the bottom picture and when that, what well, and when that I was. Guess, well, we had our all-school meeting yesterday, and we normally do have it in the auditorium space that we have in the building. and. Uh, 
it's a popular auditorium with a lot of people come there and rent it from us occasionally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's always been awkward, I think, for the school meeting because everybody, the students would all sit in the back of the auditorium and the faculty sit in the first two rows. And then they'd sort of twist their heads around, speaking of like a Linda Blair and the Exorcist, <laughs> <laughs> and try to see the faculty behind, the students uh -huh, uh -huh. behind them. So I think it worked a lot better having it outside in the courtyard space. Yeah. Though it was hot and there was threatening rain. And uh, we had, you may see in the picture, there's a tent that we put in the middle just in case it did rain that we could all run toward mm -hmm. the tent mm -hmm. and get covered. But you were right, it's a kind of hot and uninviting space. People have worked hard to make it better. You can see in the upper picture that there's a, there are these fans, these sails, really. And in fact, during the storm, I joked to the guy that runs our fabrication shop that maybe they would pick the whole building up and just carry it away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so they you do help some. They, they, help they some. do, yeah. And you didn't let this, you know, count as an excuse, all these obstacles, because after all, when we're complaining about all these things, rain and sun, we're in the tropics, right? And yeah. we come from other places where we know what's extreme and unpleasant. So here it's it's all pretty relative. So just, you know, hiding in an air-conditioned, dark, you know, hermetic, introverted classroom is just not a good excuse. It is, right? it's a strange space, I think, mm -hmm. this courtyard, mm -hmm. because it has this sort of staircase that is both like a stage and a staircase. Yeah. The treads are of different scales. They yeah, seem yeah. to kind of go up in funny angles. It reminds you of a kind of M.C. Escher <laughs> drawing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're yeah, not yeah. sure yeah. where you're going to end yeah, up yeah. when you go up the yeah, stairs. Yeah. And yeah. on top of it, when you come into the courtyard space, there's absolutely no sense of orientation mm -hmm. in the space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Students come through a space that we consider really the hallway and the antechamber mm -hmm. to the two offices. So mm -hmm. I noticed today with all, all the students now back on campus, they're kind of walking through what is really the antechamber to the office, yeah, yeah. right? The atrium. And then they get in there and then nobody knows where to go. Mm -hmm. There's no clear mm -hmm. indicator. Mm -hmm. So this is not really about weather and tropics, it's more about design and yeah. hierarchy and things like that. And, and regardless of maybe because we just made it through accreditation again, this is the exhibit going along with the accreditation. So even though we have a pretty bad building, that's not a good raw model for teaching us what we should know. Um, we sort of make, made it and made the best of it. And again, you get us out of the you know dark classrooms. And next picture um, is showing a project of ours here at Primitiva. Uh, two and you've been in, in sitting in the back in the review and pretty soon we got out into that courtyard and here the students were testing uh, large-scale prototyping uh, plants and watering you know as features of the building and testing that so using the courtyard not as sort of this classicist um, you know amphitheater uh, in, in sort of a showcasing way, but as, as an outdoor classroom, right? It would be nice to find ways to use the courtyard in different ways. It would be nice to see the courtyard be continually filled with greenery. Mm -hmm. As mm -hmm. it is, it's quite mm -hmm. a harsh space as mm -hmm. well, right? Mm -hmm. And we've done a lot to try to mitigate some mm -hmm. of that. But mm -hmm. I think this kind of exercise where you see plants as in the picture mm -hmm. makes an enormous difference yeah, to the yeah. character of the place. And well, I see DeSoto there from your last show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're looking at the model. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, anyway, so you had an even I mean putting this to a bigger scale, you said basically scaffold the building, let the vines let well, nature take over. That's sort of a thought I had when I looked at back. the outside of it. You know, the other yeah. buildings on campus in the old quad are made much like the Royal Hawaiian, probably out of terracotta block mm -hmm. or concrete block of mm -hmm. some sort, um, what they would have called tile or a concrete tile. And then mm -hmm. they were stuccoed over with real sort of cement and they look quite solid and good. And yeah, then yeah. you come to our building and that use the kind of construction technology that you're referring to there mm -hmm. in Eva, mm -hmm. where there's yeah, really yeah. a kind of Cheap. steel frame building yeah, yeah. with a mesh with basically the same kind of material that you would use to line a swimming pool mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and very thin so that the, yeah. the grill that holds this concrete rusts quite quickly mm -hmm. and then it peels up and it does. I, I admit that today I said to you, maybe we should grow, as you said, there's a good German saying, but an old architect friend of mine said, if the building goes bad, 
Mm -hmm. You grow a vine over mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah, <laughs> Efeu als Architektentrost is the German way of saying it. We were just over coffee. We were looking at a couple of books at, about architecture on on UH, which the son and I will do a show in a couple of shows. And you were fascinated by a picture that showed the condition just before they built our building in the early 90s. There was still the old portables, right? Well, there were a series of portables put in, and they beginning of, I guess, starting really in the late 60s mm -hmm. into the early mm -hmm. 70s. Mm -hmm. And if you walk around the campus today, you can still see them. And they have this kind of wonderful kind of visionary Pacific character. Yeah, them, yeah. You know, sort of residual feeling of, uh, mm. of say, almost like military construction. Yeah, it like, reminds me also of your favorite, one of your favorite Jean Prouvé, although it's yeah, not yeah, metal, it of course, it but a wooden Jean Prouvé. Yeah, so. I noticed he said they're all, the, the books that they're on wood posts, but most of them are on kind of concrete footings, mm -hmm, so they're mm -hmm, quite mm -hmm. nice. And I think when they built them, they were called the temporaries. Yeah, yeah. Now they're 60 years old, well uh -huh. eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Good point. When, when the university gave up a few, St. Francis School grabbed them, so mm -hmm. they moved a couple over to mm -hmm. St. Francis mm -hmm. School. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Lower Campus, there are still a couple there. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. often would look at them and think, what a wonderful yeah. house these uh -huh, would make, uh -huh. you know? And, uh, and they're very basic. Yeah. And, I think Environmental yeah. Studies has their office in one of them as well. Next picture, let's move on. Or, you know, this is what our Tropic Here fellow David Rockwood does, always in the uh, spring, I believe. Yeah, in the spring he does an elective about tropical screens. And mm -hmm. so here they're using the, uh, the courtyard for sort of real condition demonstrations and using the sun and, and checking it out, how it performs, right? So again, if we're stuck with that building and with a courtyard, we might as well do something, take advantage of it in a more sort of uh, progressive way. But then next picture, um, I didn't find one of us because this is our preferred uh, tutoring space when we work with the ARC students on committees. We always ask them to sit there. Mm -hmm. And this is when our friend Will Bruder was visiting and he was rather disappointed about our building as well. And he got excited about this one. He says, well, this is how it should be. And what building is that this, again? This is Saunders Hall, the building formerly known as Porteous Hall. Mm -hmm. I think. And then mm -hmm. For a while, it was just the building formerly known, sort of like Prince or something, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then it, now it's renamed Saunders, and it really is a pleasant and attractive building. It's a late Ossipoff mm -hmm. building. Um, yeah. I guess Sid Snyder was involved mm -hmm. in it as well, and I think it's because of the height of the building. It protects the courtyard, and then it's open to the breezes below. Exactly. And then, which our building is definitely not. No, There's really no. no access for Well, this is almost the opposite or the end antithesis of the of our ability right, right? this right. is doing right what ours does wrong and vice versa and then again you notice right away there's a royal palm in the middle of yeah. it and you've got yeah. all sorts yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Definitely. of vegetation there and it's yeah, a yeah. pleasant space and you'll see during the day mm -hmm. people from all over the campus work their way yeah. over to it so. and going even further there's another building uh, built way earlier than this one because this was 70s but uh, very early in the mid-century phase of UH age architecture, which is the next picture, there's a building that a couple generations had made proposals. It goes back to when Spencer Leineweber was still alive and David Rock was speaking of him. They had made studios, feasibility studies to basically move us here and move what's currently in this building into us because what our building tragically probably doesn't get by without is air conditioning. And the things that are in this building, they might not mind air conditioning as much as we do. And what, what building is that? This is Sinclair Library, and it really is a lovely building on campus, um, designed by the really the predecessor firm to Architects Hawaii, mm -hmm. Lamon Haynes. you remember the other partners' names? Uh, uh, well, they change, you know, over the time, so it's hard right. to remember. Lamon and Haynes, but, I know. But Frank I knew Haynes, Frank yeah. quite well. Yeah. I miss him sorely. He was a very, a real gentleman in many ways. but. Um, even as a library, this was kept open, mm. not all air conditioned, only the video room was air conditioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is where a lot of the architecture periodicals would be. And mm -hmm. when you go there, you really did, they did take advantage yeah, of yeah. breezes in a way that we don't anymore today. It is actually is listed on the National and State mm -hmm. Registers of mm -hmm. Historic Places. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, very good. <laughs> and can you imagine when you were talking about how sort of disconnected ours is and people don't have orientation? And 
often when we have events, we try to tell people where we are and they don't get it because they're saying we just see a parking lot and some big chunk of building mass above it. Where this one here is not only positioned right, actually the, the client brief, so our university as the client was, was mandating uh, natural ventilation and orientation doing right. And this creates a great sort of facade, uh, an address to the street, so you could have exhibits there and demonstrate all the stuff we're doing. It's very interesting, you know, that the uh, modernism has often been criticized for its lack of hierarchy and sense mm -hmm. of procession and movement mm -hmm. and movement through a building, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the, the old Beaux-Arts architects sort of understood this theatrical aspect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to architecture, whereas mm -hmm. in our building, we have the semblance of that yeah, without yeah. any of the reality of that. That's so you kind of go through and get stuck yeah, yeah, in yeah. the middle and go, yeah, yeah. oh, is this the door to the auditorium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. no, that was the broom closet. Yeah, yeah. Let's try this door. Oh, it's the men's bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one, oddly enough, you have a really strong sense of how mm -hmm. it works. A cool observation. I mean, ours is Pomo Beaux Arts. You uh -huh. know? It's so it's pretending. It doesn't really right. yeah. follows the principles. It just wants to look like right. But internally, it's sort of lost the connection to right. that. Right. So let's leave the sort of the the built environment and look at the what makes us, which is our student body. And next picture shows you uh, on a review as a committee member and then shows two boards that were selected for accreditation as one of the best DRG projects. So you want to talk about that a little yeah, bit and about are, recruitment? These were really wonderful projects and they were by um, a local kid who was actually born in Japan and spent mm -hmm. his early life in Japan mm -hmm. whose parents really moved here so he could go to UH mm -hmm. and to high school here mm -hmm. as I remember mm -hmm. he went to McKinley mm -hmm. High School. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other guy came from uh, Korea mm -hmm. and uh, he had this wonderful kind of work ethic mm -hmm. and he knew how to work with these different materials and he was very interested in modular buildings mm -hmm. and buildings that would address kind of the needs of housing, which is something I think architects over the mm -hmm. historically have often looked at, mm -hmm. at least since the modern period, mm -hmm. but unfortunately keep abandoning those efforts and mm -hmm. going toward commercial um, buildings or mm -hmm. prestige buildings mm -hmm. like museums mm -hmm. or something like that mm -hmm. and not really making a great mm -hmm. contribution to mm -hmm. our present housing crisis, which we see every day in Honolulu. Absolutely. Yeah, so on the left, uh, his name is Akira, you know, from Japan, and then Ju Hyung to the right was, uh, or is, uh, from Korea. And next picture, uh, you have some interesting thoughts to basically tap more into this sort of us being the most Western school in the United States. I was previously saying East because I was thinking yeah, about yeah, the closest to the a, East, depending on how you look at it. You the difference between yeah, the I two terms. I don't know that, either, but, but <laughs> wanted to help you out. So. Thank you. <laughs> East and West are so close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our spelling, really. So here we're talking about <laughs> Vietnam, and this is a is a project that was selected for accreditation. Again, the centerpiece by uh, Tropic here, Rockwood here. Uh, architecture 744, going from the very macro to the micro, and it's strongly related to his own research in Vietnam. In fact, he just got back, and we did, a, we did a show with him. And again, there is some very, very great uh, sort of potential of recruiting students from there, because we're yeah. talking about their great work ethics. And again, then our local kids might say, well, hey, what about us? But I think it's good competition, right? It oh, shows absolutely. them their very high standards and makes them maybe work a little harder. Absolutely. I think we have a global track program at the mm -hmm. University of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And that we have quite a few people now. This year we, have a, we had a kind of, not quite a hiatus, but a slowdown for a couple of years. And now it's back on track again. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have, I think, nine new students from mm -hmm. the mainland that are going through global track. And they were attracted to the University of Hawaii because of this. Mm -hmm. And they wanted this opportunity to work in a place that is Asia-focused. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And um, we always say Asia-Pacific. One of the things I want to do is be a little more Pacific Island-focused. Mm -hmm. The money isn't there, the population isn't there in the same sense, mm -hmm. and the urban development isn't there really to the same degree. Mm -hmm. But I think that we kind of owe it to our Pacific Island neighbors to mm -hmm. to address some of their issues, which mm -hmm. include things like mm -hmm. housing. Yeah, and I think David just had a one-year Fulbright mm -hmm. in in Vietnam, and we really we had a meeting yesterday 
with international programs, um, people about this and how we could maybe establish a relationship with a couple of universities in, in Vietnam. And I'm planning to next week visit two Thai universities mm -hmm. that I'm familiar with a lot of the faculty there, including the dean at Chula Longcorn. And we'd like to resuscitate or really bring back a program that was once very healthy mm -hmm. and now is kind of dribbled off mm -hmm. through lack of mm -hmm. attention. So. There's our colleague Bandit from Tadpole Studio as uh -huh, well, who right. has ties to that. So we got great, um, I guess, man and woman power. Let's spend the last third of the show uh, about why we're here and why we love this place. We howlies, so to speak. So let's go to the next slide here. What are your thoughts about the compilation of these images? Well, I, was, yeah. I really love Martin Denny, and I regret that I actually never heard him live. I do have a lot of his. Mm. CDs when mm -hmm. people still bought CDs. Mm -hmm. I know my daughters who are in their early 30s laugh at the idea of buying CDs. But uh, anyway, and it, but the point is, is some of the ones I have, you can't get on streaming music and you can't get through Amazon mm -hmm. either. And Martin Denny went through a number of kind of evolutions, you know, and, and uh, he started out with classic kind of tiki period music and was meant to conjure up places like Trader Vic's and mm -hmm. the kind of very notion of exotica. Mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. people that played with them, actually, I thought they must have little whistles and things. Apparently, they did everything with their voices. Mm -hmm. They just mm -hmm. made up mm -hmm. parrot calls and mm -hmm. monkeys and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But he moved with the time, and I think he always was a little tongue in cheek. He had his, he had his uh, tiki girls, and they would dance sort mm -hmm. of a apa hula in mm -hmm. the background, and mm -hmm. I think. He was giving a nod to this whole notion of kind of the sort of the, the in a way, the abuse of power relations. He was very aware of that. So mm -hmm. in a way, he called attention to it through mm -hmm. the kind of mm -hmm. mockery of it. Yeah, yeah. And I think in a way, he kind of had called attention to the way we tend to exoticize the other by celebrating exoticism. And yeah, wouldn't that be cool to do that in <laughs> architecture as well, I again, think, because mid-century, as we keep saying, all these people, uh, Frank Hayes and Pete Wimberly and Asipov, we talked, and Alfred Pies, they did that in one yeah, way or these, another. Mm -hmm. Or even here, I put at the very top left, because lots of these records have been recorded in the Bucky Dome that we that had in Waikiki. We had so one student working on Buckminster Fuller's Dome. Yeah. <clears throat> he was the only protester when it went down. <laughs> See? It was a real, a crying shame. Yeah, lost but there, yeah and there is a direct relationship <clears throat> to progression and innovation in music as one of the arts to architecture as one of the other arts. I think so too. And we were talking about movies before. And I think the movies. Movies have mm -hmm. that same sense of sequence and Absolute. the same sense of Absolute. arrival, moving yeah. through something. It's very similar yeah, 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 to yeah. the experience of a yeah, building. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and in, in another life, I was a historic preservationist mm -hmm. and still am. Over many years, I've directed the program in historic preservation at UH. And um, I think you can't take pictures of a building and you can't. Mm. sort of remember buildings strictly in that way. It's no. really experiential. Yeah, right? yeah. You've, and, got to, and that, you've got to go through the building. You've and that gets to... me to the little <clears throat> pictures in the middle on the right, which is you were hanging out at the Tahitian Lanai. I have hung out there. You know, and have really these great ashamed. memories of space <clears throat> and place and music and ocean and sort of Polynesian pop uh, design, right? And I think the scale of it, too, the mm -hmm. kind of scale of the post-war era, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that sense that, you know, the old Hilton Hawaiian village, which yeah. really was a village yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of grass-roofed huts, mm -hmm. now you would never be able to get past the fire <laughs> <code>. Absolutely. <laughs> and the pool that changed with yep. the tides yeah, yeah, and yeah, things yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. There was a much more direct connection. Uh -huh. and I think there was a connection to Maybe the experience of, you were talking about Howley's, but the military coming through mm -hmm. Hawaii in World mm -hmm. War II, mm -hmm. this kind of <clears throat> experience of the exotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, and, and some of that might have been kind of a, um, patronizing, maybe. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. But a lot of it was an act of discovery mm -hmm. and yeah. celebration. And yeah, I think yeah. people like Pete Wimberley and people who came yeah. here decided they loved it and wanted to be part of it. And talking about Pete and <coughs> running out of time, but second to last picture here, please. Uh, next picture. This is one of Pete's projects, which was the Candless uh, restaurant here, 
which again is sort of a twist on Polynesian pop architecture. It reminded us of one of our other mentees here, uh, Nick Civitano, who has done some research in sort of reviving that sort of archetype here on the island in a rather progressive way using, you know, modern wood treatment technologies and stuff like that. And in last show with DeSoto, the picture on the right there, uh, we were pointing out that we actually have very few restaurants, Tiki left, uh, and we were saying only two. And then right after the show, DeSoto uh, brought to my attention that Wailai Coffee House, which only has that little Tiki meeting room or the bar in there, is now closing after all these the years. The Wailana, the Wailana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, shame, a real shame so, that there's the Wailana. But making maybe an, an, an opportunity out of that dilemma, you have another suggestion for maybe another degree to add based upon that sort of potential and need for indoors, right? Indoor architecture that actually isn't so much indoors, it's indoor-outdoors here in the right. tropics, right? But you're maybe uh, suggesting another degree, if I'm correct? There, that's hard to pull off, you know. There, there's a kind of, I think, a naivete, a kind of honesty, a genuineness about mm -hmm. this era of architecture. Mm -hmm. It was the first discovery, and as you know, we live in a postmodern time, and so everything references something else. Mm -hmm. So now it becomes a reference to that. Mm -hmm. and Nick, I think, was maybe trying to break past that mm -hmm. to really do something that yeah. really got back to, as you say, primitiva, mm -hmm. where you mm -hmm. can really kind of get to the essentials of something mm -hmm. without mimicking the mm -hmm. forms. Mm -hmm. An opposite example is, yeah, of course, yeah. the Tiki Bar at the mm -hmm. Aston Hotel, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. really just the sham of yeah, yeah. it, much like Alani or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and Eva, you know, of course. Or, or, so of course. You don't have that. You have the very considered kind of yeah. bakery, yeah. which and has its own place. And no. I suppose some of the tiki architecture of Trader Joe's and all those places and um, probably did. It wasn't Trader Joe's. Uh, Trader Vicks. Trader, Trader Vicks. Vicks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, probably led to kind of the kind of scenography of theme parks. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> And that's, I think, good for going to our closing note, the last picture here. Um, and I saved this on the, uh, on the left from DeSoto's big uh, archive selection for that show we did about tropical aviation. And I saved that one here for you because I thought it's so perfectly embodying sort of that lure of the exotic with everything you talked about previously, about the sort of obsession with the sort of little dressed, you know, people and um, people from somewhere else. So just this sort of dreams and obsessions and, and, and with that, and in the last show we were talking about the taboo, you know, which is a Polynesian term about the sort of being on the edge of something I would like to do. And I'm not right. quite sure if I'm allowed to <clears throat> sort of this sort of excitement of exotic, right? Yeah, very much escapism in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, funny yeah. how places can carry the memory. This is a British writer, Peter Ackroyd, who writes about London. <clears throat> he talks about different neighborhoods in London and how they kind of retain something of the past. Mm -hmm. I always think this kind of allure probably goes back to the t times when um, whalers came to Hawaii mm -hmm. and actually experienced this kind of taboo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in a way, that becomes a kind of continuous thread all the way mm -hmm. to the tourist industry, yeah, which yeah, yeah. then wanted to build on that, and very mm -hmm. obviously here. Yeah. And so you here you have, as you said, the Howley arriving where they're treated like Cook would say as a king, mm -hmm, right? And mm -hmm, I think that's part mm -hmm, of the mm -hmm. continuing appeal. But for someone like you or I, who have lived here for decades, it doesn't have that. I mean, in a way, this is yeah, yeah, humorous yeah. only, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, but it's sort of, and we put in obviously Janet when she comes here, she loves to indulge in the exotic, tropical, and wear less, and, and being sexy, and so to be gender correct, so is Dwayne Johnson which we closed one of the previous shows with DeSoto, where we were like polemically, you know, saying here's our next president who walked in the, in the, in the uh, same hoods than the previous one. Well, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren did say something about him being a vice president. Uh -huh, for uh -huh, so uh -huh. Now so, that we have presidents that have come from the entertainment mm -hmm, business alone, mm -hmm. I think before you had presidents that had to learn how to be entertaining, and now you just go right to the heart of yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what you were in, in the last show, you was using this great term that ever since resonates with when you were saying basically post uh, contact construction. So I think here it's sort of post contact 
uh, subjects that maybe, you know, you're, not maybe, but very obviously you're interested in addressing. You talked about so serious issues as in environmentalism and in social housing needs to be addressed, but also sort of our, what makes us, what is our sort of identity, what is what is what we have, what no other other place has, right. and to address these things sort of in a fun way and in, in a contemporary way and in a sort of forward-thinking way, right? And maybe get away from the sort of denial that we're in a tropical place. I mm -hmm. think you have particularly been a champion of getting back to nature to some degree. Yeah, yeah. To think that people in the 40s and 50s were obsessed with how mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. nature work for human comfort, mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. we just basically yeah. uh, condition everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that's a great closing <laughs> note. Thank you, Bill, for being here. Thanks, Mark. Look forward to see you next time as an update on the time in between. And until then, you guys all stay exotically tropical and tropically exotic. And see you next week uh, with DeSoto Brown along the same lines. We call this all Archie Nature or something like that. that show us this sort of interesting, you know, in between of the build and the natural environment and certain struggles that we have here. And some developers have that where they tear good old stuff down, they want to rebuild and then they decide they don't want to build and then they put greenery in there. There's a project going on that we'll want to particularly talk about. So, and these other things we're going to talk in school, thanks to you, Bill. So thank you again for being here. Again, thanks, partner. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.